Now, this passage is talking about the profile of a man named Naaman. He's a popular man, and I believe we're all conversant with the story according to the scripture. Let me speak a little concerning his profile. The Bible says, number one, he's a captain of the host of the king of Israel. A great man with his master. Number three, honorable. Number four, by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Number five, he was a mighty man in valor. Five powerful positions. What else can a man ask for on earth? He's honorable. He has a high reputation. Through him, the Lord has used him, you know, severally to bring victory to the people of Syria. But at the end of his profile, there's something there that has cancelled every other thing, every other achievement. The Bible says, but, even with all these things, but, there is a but. He's a mighty man of valor, yes? He's, he's a captain, yes? He's everything good, yes? But he was a leper. I want to address somebody tonight. You may have achieved so much in life. You may have not achieved it at all. You may have attained a certain level in life. But is there a bot in your life? That bot could be anything. The bot could be your health. The bot could be your finance. The bot could be your foundation. The bot could be a long time issue, something that has existed even before you were born into your family. What is the bot in your life? Your bot could be in your character. You are good financially, you are good in marriage, you are good in every other place. You may be a minister. You are called upon when you minister on the pulpit. It's such a powerful sermon. There are miracles. People are moved. People are challenged. But what could be the bot? You may be a very good, a powerful preacher. Are you a powerful husband? Are you a powerful wife? Are you a powerful sibling? Are you a powerful Christian? You may be very good financially, but what about your health? Is the bot in your health? You may be doing so well in your marriage as a married person. The Lord has given you so many things, but what is the bot in that marriage? Could it be childlessness? Could it be a particular gender in the, in, in, in the children? Could it be just one child and then everything is closed up? What is the bot? Is there a bot in your life? Tonight is majorly for people with a bot in their life. But the truth is the, the answer comes when you realize there is a bot that needs to be attended to. Is your own bot inherited disease or sickness in your family? What is the bot in your father's house? Perhaps your grandmother had diabetes. He was diagnosed of high BP. Your mother had it, and you at an early age in life, at age 35, 30, you're already having high BP. At age 20, 25, you're having cancer. At age 20, you are having one terminal disease or the other. What is the bot in your father's house that God needs to visit? Is there a bot? I am not going to spend so much time trying to preach this message and expand it. I just want to really hit it so that you realize where you need help. And then we pray. And when you pray, you find out you are going to pray aggressively because that bot needs to be taken out for the full profile to be filled. Remember, child of God, Naaman was powerfully used by God, but he did not stop the bot. Naaman was a man of valor, but there was a bot. <laughs> that bot is no respecter of how you are being used. You must deal with it. You must sit on it and face it and the Lord will heal it. You may be a very good singing minister that when you sing, my God, and then there is a bot. He sings so well, but he does not carry the presence of God. Ah, there is a bot. What is the reason for the dryness? Why is the presence of God lacking in your song ministrations? 
Akaparandiada. May be a powerful preacher of the word of God like Apollos in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But he lacks the anointing power of God in the word. He lacks the Holy Ghost in his word. And Priscilla and Aquina picked him up and said, Did have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? He said, I don't know what they're talking about. They said to him, You need it for your message to be complete. What is the bot in your life? In most cases concerning this bot in the life of a man, there are always three sides to it. I'll quickly run through the three sides. To it and then we pray the first side to it is that the helper is always coming disguised the helper always comes disguised in the case of Naaman, it was a servant a captive that was brought home from the battle the wife's maid that saw it and then said can't my master do this ordinarily should be neglected ordinarily nobody would listen to her she's a common maid what does she know about this? She's not of a high class. She's not known. She's, she's a nobody. Let me Permit me to use that language, a nobody. There are so many times the Lord may have sent someone to settle the bot in your life. But that is, as a result of neglect, sometimes the Lord speaks to you through the, the mouth of children. And you take it, this is a child. He or she doesn't know what he's saying. Sometimes it could be a total stranger on the road. And you're like, if God cannot talk to me directly, who is this one to talk to me? The helper is always disguised. It's not always the person you are expecting. Hear me, somebody. God provides the channels. We must learn to walk by the channels he provides. Don't have a particular person in mind. This person knows how to do this. That person went through it and survived. Your own answer may not be the same with Mr. B's answer. Don't forget that. Late last year, or was it earlier this year, I came across um, something online about a lady or a sister who had a um, liver problem and she was dying of it either liver or kidney she was dying of that sickness and then she was not even a catholic but a catholic church nearby where she stays had a second collection in church to raise money for her surgery and treatment and by the mercy of god the church was able to raise that money during the mass now they collected that money invited this sister and gave her this money and said the church raised this money for your treatment take this money go to the hospital and let them treat you and carry out the surgery but do you know what the sister said the sister said no her faith is against it that in her church they don't do that they don't go to church in her that in her church they don't go to hospital and they don't do surgeries they don't do cs in their church this lady ignorantly rejected this help and not long after that she died now tell me somebody would you say god was not involved she killed herself no wonder the bible said my people perish for lack of um, knowledge she died for ignorance what now is the pot in your life has ignorance been a problem the help always comes disguised to this sister she was waiting no no god must touch and heal me god already used the church to raise the money for your treatment but she refused she was waiting god must touch me ah may ignorance never allow us perish in jesus name even as the word is coming on right now i am seriously sensing in my spirit somebody here somebody under the sound of my voice is suffering from dementia uh, Holy Spirit, help me. I don't really know the meaning of that. Dementia. Dementia. It, it, it runs in your family. It runs in your family. You are not the only one suffering from it. A predable shock attire. But if you are the one by the mercy and power of God present in this program, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. And right now I declare by the power of God, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, I talked about the first side to this kind of healing. And the second side to it is the prophetic dimension. The prophetic dimension. When Naaman obeyed, listened to the little maid, and went looking for the king, the Bible said the king tore his clothes because he felt, when have I become a healer? 
Why is this case coming to me? What have they turned me into? I'm a king and not anything else. I am a king. I am not what you think. I don't drink cantations or divinations or such things. But the, the prophet in the land heard it and sent a message to the king. So why are you tearing your clothes? For him to know there is a prophet in Israel. Allah para took it here. Child of God, even if you lack anything in life, never lack the voice of God over your life. May the voice of God always speak for you in time of need. If it does not speak directly to you, let him lay it in your heart. If it's not so strong in your heart, may he send somebody that represents him to you. But may his voice never cease in your life. 